Okay, welcome back to Valence Developer Diaries number 18. It's been a while. Um, we took a bit of a pause because of Valence 6 development. We are gonna be going the route of doing these monthly uh, before we were doing it weekly. Um, however, I think it's a little better if it's just done monthly. Um, if you have any suggestions for Valence Developer Diaries topics, please email us at support at cnxcorp.com. And if you have any questions or issues with Valence or Nitro App Builder itself, please visit our forms and post as you see fit. Um, <clears throat> so today we're going to go over two new features in the latest build of Valence 6. One is the local data on an edit grid. So that will be the first one. The second one will be the update to NAB RPG button programs. Um, with this latest update, anyone that already has an existing button program can will, will need to recompile those programs for this uh, new change, unfortunately, but it's for the better. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna log in. Okay, and we already have some widgets already created. Uh, we did that because it's easier to do that than you watching us create these widgets. You've probably seen it before already. So we have <clears throat> a customer order lines and orders. So I'm going to first start with the order form. So here's our form. It's just based off of the demo CMAS order header file. Okay. And then our order lines list, which is Metagrid, is based off of our demo order detail lines. Okay, so let's go into the edit grid itself. Everything's gonna seem the same. Nothing real changes, nothing that you'll notice that's a big change. However, the one item that we're going over today is under data, so configure and data, there's a new option called local. So <clears throat> one thing to notate is that if you're gonna use local data, you can't have this paging um, and what's this mean? So this means that currently like, with local turned off, the edit grid works as it normally has from, be, from the beginning. You add records, you change records, you delete records. It's happening right away on the back end automatically for you. With local turned on, um, validations can happen for adding a record or changing a record or even deleting if you want. However, the, the back end tables and rows records will not be affected yet. So it's all locally on the browser that these changes are happening. Or if I'm adding records, the data is in the browser, it's in this widget, we see it in the edit grid, but if you looked at the table in the back end, it wouldn't have these records yet. So it's up to you at, at a certain point in time in your app to call your exnab button program, which then will have to do the lifting of, okay, I'm gonna add these records or post all this information that's changed. Okay. Sean, do you have anything to add or? Okay. Sean's here too. <laughs> um, okay. So we already have this widget all set up and we'll go through the button program in a little bit and Sean will walk. So we're going to create this new app. And the first thing we're going to do is add the form. And then we're going to add the lines list. And I'm just going to fix this margin. And Sean, you said for the the list itself, what did you want to name it? Order lines. And we're going to be putting friendly names on both of these widgets. The reason is this is going to be for our back end RPG button program to pull this information. Um, and you'll see that in a little bit when Sean walks through that. And I'm going to give this a little more width. No, not width. I want width. Okay. And then the form, Sean. Order form. form. Okay. I'm just giving it a name. And I will say that we're going to want to have a button added to what the section? Um, yeah, okay. So 
going to go to behaviors. And on our section, I'm just going to add a button. What do you want to call it, Sean? Add order. Add order. Okay. And then when we click this add order button, what do we want to do? We want to call an RPG program. Um, the program name is DD18 ADD ORD. ADD ORD. Okay. Uh, do we have an action or anything? No. Okay. That's it. So this is behavior is really simple. The app on the front end is really simple. Um, I'm just going to save that. Okay. All right, so we now have this new application called Customer Orders. Let me go to the launch pad, fire it off. Okay, so what we're saying is we're gonna select, we're what, creating a new customer with orders or just existing customer, right? So, yeah, we're taking a customer, an existing customer and adding, adding. an order on the right so an order has one to many lines. Okay. So existing customer, let's do CNX, uh, ship to address, I don't know, sure. Main Street, that looks good. Uh, we don't get that's right. So we're adding an order and then here's the lines for that order. So we're gonna add a new line. What's our item? Sure, quantity two, create. So this information that was just added with our edit grid is here in the is here in our edit widget in the browser. However, the back end table, it does not have a new record for this just yet. It won't have a new record. We've said do everything local because I'm going to deal with maintaining the tables at a certain point, which is going to be our add order. So I'm going to add two of these. And a quantity of five. Okay. So it's been, I'm going to click add order. So order 14324 has been added. What would be a good way to do that? File editor? Yeah. Let's go to file editor. Do more D. And here is our two items that we added for that order. Okay. Now I think the front end change is, is really not, not that detailed. Like it's very easy. It's the back end that we're really going to want to focus on. So I think Sean, do you want to share your screen and walk through that? Um, you should be able to share. I think I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to okay. mute myself. Okay. I assume everyone can hear me all right. You hear me coming through there, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me just, I'm just going right back into the, the application because I just want to talk through um, how this coincides with the back end. So we have two widgets. Um, we have this form and, and, and the list. And remember when Johnny added both of these widgets, he gave a, a name to it, order form in this case. Um, and then he gave a name to the grid here of order lines. And the spelling of this, you know, uppercase and everything completely matters um, because with the new, that the changes to the button-based programs um, previously, well, let's just talk about how it worked previously. Previously, when you, when you didn't have local data on a grid, when you, would, when you would click add, it would add that record to the database immediately. And in this case, it really wouldn't make sense because we would be adding detail records before we even added a header record because this represents the header 
and this represents the detail. So I want them to be added all at once. So that's why, that's why we're doing the local data. Um, and additionally, the change that was needed in order to achieve something like that, the button needed to have access to all widgets. If, if you're already familiar with App Builder and, and button-based programs, you'd know that the button, you only have access to the data on the widget if the button is attached to the widget. And now you can put your buttons anywhere and you have access to all widgets. So let's first, first I'll just quickly show, show the backend code for, um, for that DD18 add org. So oh, this is exactly the same here. Um, you know, no, nothing's changed in here. As, as always, we start at process. So let's just see what we're doing here. Um, first, you know, we're just defining uh, a couple data structures based off our order header file and our order detail file. And I, I'm really just going to focus mostly on what's new. So, so look what we're doing here. The first thing we're doing is we're, uh, there's a new procedure called set widget. And notice this is the exact spelling as Johnny specified in the front end for that order form. So what this will do is it will look at the, you know, whatever was posted from the front end and it's going to set all of the data to that order form, just as if the button was attached to that form. So now any subsequent procedure calls I make, they're all going to be operated against that order form. So what are we doing here? We're just, so now we're doing get form num. Well, it's going to operate against order form because that's the last call to set widget. So we're getting the customer number. We're just doing a simple check here. Um, you know, if, if they didn't, if they didn't happen to select a customer, we're going to send back a uh, customer must be selected. Um, getting the, the next order number basically from the file. And then we're doing more, you know, these are the same procedures that have already existed, you know, get form char. Now we're just getting all of those, uh, all of those inputs from the front end for those form fields. So now we're done with the form. Now we want to focus on the lines of the order. So now notice we're calling set widget order lines. And so now we're, we're, we're behaving just as if the button was attached to the list. So, you know, if, if you're familiar with this stuff already, you would know, okay, yeah, that G selection count would show me the number of, uh, you know, rows. And because this is a local, because we specified local on the grid, we're sending you everything. Every single row on that grid will be sent down. So we're just doing a simple check make sure they have at least one line item. And then we're just looping through. I mean, this is just, uh, you know, nothing, nothing new here. Um, we're just looping through and we're writing out a record, you know, for each order line. But notice the get selection char, you know, that, that's, that's been there before. And this is, this, is, this is nothing new either, but it's operating against the last widget that we called set widget for. So if I had multiple grids, you know, I can pull data from multiple grids, I would just need to call set widget. So finally, at the end, uh, we got a couple new things here. Set response is, is you know, that, that, that's that been there forever. Um, but we're still working against order lines, because I haven't made another call to set widget yet. And I'm so now I'm sending back a response that's directed towards that order lines component, and I'm telling it to clear all data. That's basically just gonna, you know, we'll we'll go through it again. But you know, after Johnny pressed the add order button, it came back, and then all those lines were just wiped out of the list. So that's all I want to do to the order lines. Now I'm going to set my focus back to the order form, and I'm going to tell it to reset itself. Basically, just clear all the fields, and then. As always, we're sending back a success property and then we're just sending back a little message just telling them the order that's been added. Um, one last thing I want to point out. If if we had happened to put our add add order button. Sorry, let me just let me just pull this thing up. It'll be easier to look here. 
if we happen to put our order but our add order button you know like let's say we put it here let's say we put it on the form by default i wouldn't need to call set widget against the order form because if it's attached to it it's going to assume that that's the first widget you want to work with it wouldn't hurt to call set widget but just so you know it, it would still work the same way as if you know previous button programs if it's attached to the if it's if you have a button attached to the widget and that's all you care about. There's no need to call set widget. It'll all still work as it used to. Okay. I think that's all I got. <laughs> all right. I don't know, any questions, comments? All right. All right, I'm gonna mute myself and hand it back to Johnny. All right. Well, if there's no questions, that's I think we've covered the two topics we wanted to today. Um, again, if anyone has any uh, suggestions for content for the developer diaries, which we're going to shoot for monthly, um, please send us an email at um, support at cmxcorp.com. If you have any questions or issues with Valence Nitro App Builder, please visit our forums. And uh, then we'll see you in about a month. Thanks, everyone.